with our layout. We've got our grid layers that are going to help us align everything. And we've also got a rough draft of where our letters are going to be. Now I'm gonna keep everything in a capital just to make it simpler. If you wanna keep your project simple, do the capital letters like I did. If you wanna be a little bit more complex, you are welcome to work with cursive or lowercase letters, but I'm gonna stick with capital so we don't deal with anything coming below the lines. You're gonna deal with that with lower letters, um, lowercase letters, as well as cursive. So, like I said, I'm gonna keep it like this, some bold letters. Now, I have sent each of you guys the Pinterest link to get all different types of ideas for your lettering, okay? All this kind of inspiration. Like I told you, I am going to work with these bold um, capital letters here for my design. So I found one that I really liked, and there are a couple ways that we can work with this. Um, number one, you can add the image after you've saved it to your camera roll by clicking that plus sign and bringing your alphabet into your um, workspace. And what you could do is you can drag um, this below. And now what you could do is you can mess with the shape tool, the transform tool to change the shape you can see that the K is my first letter here, and I can start to line it up. What I could do also is work with um, transparency here, and then again, I'm going to kind of line my K up with my rough draft letter and my grid, so now that K is kind of perfect. You will do that for each letter if you decide to go this route, and I'm just gonna show you it really fast. Again, pick a tool that works for you. I really like this inking pen. I like the line that it creates. I'm gonna get a little bit of a darker line here. And if I were to go this route, I'm gonna make my letters black for now. I'll, I'll show you how to change the color of your letters later, but let's just work on the form of it so I can get really close. Again, I created a new layer over here that I will draw in. So I should see a drawing layer, a rough draft, and then my type tool. So now I could just go through, I can bring all of these things that I'm tracing, I could turn off the, um, let's, let's instead of bringing the opacity down, I'm gonna turn the eyeball off. So now I only see the letter there. The rough draft is a great way, so it's telling me I'm on the wrong layer. The rough draft is a great way to get um, the line up right. So then when I go in here with my letters, now mine's pretty shaky. Remember that you could turn your uh, predictive stroke on and that will clean up the letters. I would just do it kind of like eyeing it out for right now and then I would do another layer on top, which I'll show you, where I refine it a little bit more. So I'm gonna go through and do a couple of letters. So now if I finish this letter, I would come back to my reference tool here, change it up to be the N. Ooh. Now, if you know some of that gets cropped out, you might need to import the photo back in here and do this again. This is where I really feel like this, this kind of tracing is a little bit time consuming and something that I don't really enjoy too much, but this is one option. You can go and move the picture underneath, trace, and then get to the next step. I prefer to work this way. Instead of actually importing it into my data space, what I will do, I'm gonna turn this letter thing back on. Um, what I will do is um, actually pull it up in a split screen. So instead of tracing, I'm just inspired by it. If you've never done a split screen on your iPad before, basically you take it from the bottom of the screen and you lift up. So you get to see this little drop down menu. Now I can see that my photo is saved in my photo album here. So I will just hold on to that and drag it up here on the top. That way I can open up this picture and look at it as I'm drawing. Okay. Maybe I want to take it, and you can kind of like move 
this split screen around like that, if it helps. Let's do something like that. So now what I can do is I can go to my drawing layer and I can take down my rough draft. So I just see it a little bit. And now I'm gonna look at the end and I'm gonna use that to start to bring it in. So, okay, I'm inspired by it, but I'm not tracing it. If you wanna do like a straight line and you're having a hard time with it, uh, remember you got your ruler grids. So let's say I wanna do an end line, a straight line that way. So you guys can see as I'm doing these layers, I am gonna get more refined and more refined as I build up. Another thing about circles, so I'm gonna do an O here. If I try to do a circle, and I hold it down, it will try to make me a little bit of a nicer circle. I can see from my inspiration, it gets a little wider at the edges. Now look at how my letters are getting a little bit too big. This is gonna be exactly what I showed you before, which is taking my lasso tool and moving some things around. So maybe I wanna take my K, Move it a little bit more this way. If I hold, it will straighten it out for me. Alright, so now that I have the general outlines, I can come back to, you know, um, dropping some colors in because I've got all these enclosed shapes, so my tolerance is way too high for that. Um, and basically, I'm going to keep everything black till the end. I'll show you guys um, what that's all about later. Um, you just want to make sure that you've got these enclosed shapes so that you can go through and clear it up. You know, also just make sure when you're filling that you get all those little spots cleaned up so that we can drop some colors into these solid forms later. Um, and that means when we drop it in, you might have to go back with your brush and just kind of clean up some of this inside stuff now, right now I'm gonna show you a little shortcut. I've got an O here, and I want to place another O here so I don't wanna rewrite it. So what I'm gonna do, everything that we're doing is really learning how to use our selection tools and our move tools. So our selection right here, if I click my lasso again, and I draw around this O, and I go to my layer over here, you're gonna see that we've got copy and paste options. You don't wanna cut, because that's gonna get rid of the original one and just move it. So I'm gonna copy it and paste it. Now the transform tool is automatically opened up so that if I start to move, I can place that O right into there. Now sometimes, the depending on the angle that you've got or the space that you've got, you may want to distort it a little bit. Like maybe I want this to be a little skinnier. My that and you are written a little skinnier than my no. This is a wider, um, I wrote this one much wider. So that means we're gonna have to distort it a little bit. So this is a distortion tool. It lets you break free from the standard ratio of that. And that way I can kind of like take some of these sides 
See, and I can move it in a little bit more to match the style of that letter. Um, so I'm just gonna keep moving through, keep making my quote come to life. That is how we get a nice letter being inspired by fonts that we find online and using it together to start to create our letters, okay? This is a longer process. It should take a couple of days to get all of our letters in there. In my next video, I'll show you how to change the color. I'll show you how to add a drop shadow and add some textures inside of your letter.